My name is Roger Newton, I'm President and CEO of Asperion Therapeutics. Asperion is focusing on uh, discovering new drugs to, to treat metabolic syndrome and cardiovascular diseases. We're looking at it from the standpoint of small molecule treatment, pill in the bottle type of approaches, biopharmaceutical treatments, that's injectables or infusion uh, of, of biologics, biopharmaceuticals that are, they, that is, and, uh, and uh, nutraceuticals. We're looking at ways in which uh, we can uh, use supplements and natural products to uh, promote cardiometabolic health. You know, we're about 75% full now. We've only been, uh, been open for the last 16 months, and uh, it, it's, it's a great place for young entrepreneurs who are interested in the life sciences arena to actually uh, be able to work in a, an environment which is state of the art. The, the biggest effect that Google uh, Fiber can have is to rapidly bring um, technology whether it's in, in any part of the world, to Michigan, and Michigan take its technology potentially to any part of the world. Even though this is a, uh, you know, this is a very uh, close-knit community here and very innovative, and one where we can, um, you know, there's a lot of collaboration going on, to do something in real time, and to do something where resolution, whether it's a, it's a webinar, whether it's a seminar, whether it's uh, going over data, if you can do that in real time, in a collaborative manner, um, just in, 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 in this area would be fabulous to do. There's so much talent, there's so, much, so many researchers that are working in, in, in very important areas where there's unmet medical needs. If we can do that rather than having to drive someplace, you can do it right here and you can actually real time look at the data and then determine what the next experiment's going to be. That's going to that's gonna revolutionize collaborations just in this area. And then if you think about what could be done from the standpoint of the North Research Campus Complex, okay, the North Campus Research Complex, pardon me, that, that could be a global center for translational medicine. Not just for Michigan, not just for the Midwest, but for the U.S., for North America, for the world. We can interface with anybody around the world that is, is working in an area that has a, a critical unmet medical need and or, or you could have a, a, a connection with um, whether it's radiologists or whether it's people doing uh, gastroenterology or whether they're doing looking at liver function or heart function which is what we're most interested in. You can collaborate in real time with anybody around the world like that. And, and so you can, I'm just looking at this as the, the not just even an incremental, it's almost an exponential um, improvement of communication and real-time transfer of data and ability to be able to work more rapidly and more, more cohesively in a collaboration. Not just for, you know, the, the, the academic institutions, but also for, like, Asperion. Let's say we have a collaboration and a strategic alliance with a European company. Um, or a Japanese company. That will give us the opportunity to be able to interface with them in, in a much more fluid, much more in-depth, and much more scientific way than what we do now. Um, so as far as helping the Ann Arbor area, helping the life sciences, helping the economy of Michigan, and life science being one of those focused uh, um, businesses that we want to grow in Michigan, this, this would be fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. The other part of it is the capability of different clinics sharing information. Say you have a clinical trial and you have, it's a, it's a multi-center study. And those, those, those studies are in fi on five different continents. And you want to be able to share that information in real time. Um, the cost, you don't have to fly someplace. The speed, the data can be can be uh, relayed to you very very quickly, and the capability of then moving on to the next experiment or the next study, or working on the protocol for the next study, that all can be done very very rapidly and much more efficiently. Well, one of the biggest issues that I think exists is the translation of science to medicine and then medicine to public health. Okay. One of the ways that this can be done, I think 
with, with uh, Google Fiber is, and it's happening already right now, is to have meaningful ways of people to individually learn about and be responsible about their health. Okay, this is important in the in the in the healthcare reform, and the way of doing that it can be done right now. It's done through webinars. Okay, the resolution of those, the, the slides, the uh, the capability of communicating that in in a, in a really meaningful way is less than optimum. Let's put it that way. I think with Google Fiber, that 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 those problems can be eradicated. They can be solved. They can be resolved, and this way. This whole idea of taking individual responsibility for your health and understanding, okay, what do I need to do to be a healthier person? It could be a nutritional change, it could be lifestyle change, it could be, oh, I've got this symptom, what does that symptom mean? Um, you can go online and figure it out perhaps yourself rather than going to the emergency room or going to your doctor. Uh, there's all kinds of things that can be beneficial. And with Michigan, I think the problem is we've got plenty of of entrepreneurship. We've got plenty of knowledge and research knowledge in life sciences here, but how much of that gets actually transferred to the public in a way that's meaningful? You know, whether it's a researcher like me or whether it's a medical doctor, uh, who's a clinician or a clinician researcher in a particular area, that information doesn't get disseminated to the public. So the public can say, I don't want to have a problem with high blood pressure. I don't want to have a problem with high cholesterol. I don't want to have a problem with a, a uh, intestinal uh, a problem such as leaky gut or gluten intolerance, food allergies, these sorts of things. This can all be communicated and there can be ways uh, that this can be not just going to a website or going to an organizational site and trying to figure out what to do. This can be actually very instructional from the standpoint of people learning real time and then making those lifestyle changes that improve their health. 40 to 60 percent of all people in Michigan, you go county by county by county, the reason they die is due to a cardiovascular problem. So public health, huge opportunity here, huge opportunity. The integration of that knowledge and bringing about change can be really um, dramatically changed, I think, as a result of having this you know, in real time. Being able to have more rapid communication with the FDA, for example, on, on compounds that are in development and having a, a real-time correspondence with them about any issues that might come up, whether it has to do with the efficacy of the compound or the safety of the compound. You know, you, can, you, you don't have to wait necessarily uh, to do that. You can do it immediately. You can do it in real time and you can get answers much more rapidly. I think the overall cost of doing business as far as R&D in, in the life sciences industry, I think the, the overall cost can be streamlined dramatically and the time span of what it takes to have governmental review of, of your documents and governmental, governmental communication with companies can be streamlined dramatically. It, it should reduce the costs significantly and the time from uh, basically concept to actual market should also be reduced. Thank you.